Good morning and welcome to the uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, we will begin as is customary with the observance of a moment of silence. Please rise for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't see any uh, folks for public comment, so I will uh, take a moment just to welcome Mr. Michael J. Kuhn to our uh, Board of Commissioners. Um, this is his first public meeting, and I, I trust that the Board of State will treat him well today. At least give him one meeting. Immersion by baptism. Yeah, so, Michael, welcome, and uh, we look forward as a team to work together and uh, have a good future. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, look forward, Mike. Look forward to working with both of you and benefit uh, the uh, taxpayers and citizens of our community. Well, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we have the approval of the minutes. Um, I believe of the last two meetings. Just the last one. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make a motion to approve the minutes. Second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So moved. Now we have some items that are usually only taken care of once a year, but we have um, some reorganization things that we need to uh, address. And the first is uh, as far as the liaison ships um, that we restructured uh, with the passing of Commissioner Ames. Organization of the officers first. Oh, I have my liaison thing out of order. Okay. Oh, well, that's Board of Commissioners and liaisons, both under county. Gotcha. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, all right, so we'll go with the. Uh, well, let's see, how are we doing this? We start with the vice chairman? Well, my, I provided you the typical motions that are done at the beginning of the year for reorganization, which you, obviously you already did, as you referred to, in January. Um, so, what we've provided here are the motions for vice chair, for secretary, and then for the liaison ships. I'm an I did this under the assumption that Commissioner Phillips would remain the chair since that was the way it was established. But yeah, I, you're, I, you're I, wide open to, to change that if you'd like. I respectfully ask that we do do all the um, officers. And I can say it's a formality, but I think Mike should have the opportunity and uh, in making this official because without it, um, why are we reorganizing? Well, because it's a dictatorship, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, well, because I mean, the answer to that last question is because you only had two to fill three positions, so you have to reorganize now. You have three again. But if you want to do the chair, that's fine. I'm not going to fight that. So let's okay. uh, seek a motion to uh, have nominations for the chairmanship. So I nominate Mr. Phillips as the chair. And I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Now we'll move on to the vice chairman. I'll nominate Michael J. Kuhn for vice chairman on the board. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comment or question? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. And uh, Jamie, just must we do secretary as well? Yeah, okay, yeah because you had done a dual assignment before. Okay, I didn't know if those are separate stations. Okay. We'll move uh, for a nomination of secretary of the board. Nominate Mrs. Blitz. I'll second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we uh, assign secretary duties to, sec uh, to Commissioner Litz. Any comment or question? Every no in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 The same sign, so moved. So now we move on to the liaison ships. We get there eventually. Um, and we have three 
schedule these, and um, uh, there's a, a list that kind of evenly divides the, uh, uh, the uh, work that needs to be done with these uh, different liaisonship, liaison relationships. So um, I would look for a motion to adopt this schedule as presented. Move that we approve the list as, as submitted. Um, you're looking at a list of, like, I don't know what happened to my list. Huh. Yours doesn't look right. Yeah, it doesn't. <clears throat> yeah, this looks like the right one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this looks like the right one. Was yesterday. The revised list, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll second that motion. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the revised list. Any questions or comments regarding that uh, motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same signs, so move. Okay, so then um, at this point, you can go into a brief salary board to reorganize uh, that board, and then the same um, call board of assessment, and then call board of elections. Uh, we'll open nominations for the uh, salary board for chairman. I'll make a motion uh, for Bob to be chair of the salary board. Second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Any question or comment? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Post save sign. So we go right down to four, Jamie, or mm -hmm. pay for others, other positions for yeah, for vice chair and yep. secretary of the salary okay. board. Yeah. All right. Uh, for I'll accept the nomination for sec uh, vice chairman of the salary board. Move on. Mr. Coon, uh, or Commissioner Coon, I guess I should say, for vice chair. I'll we'll second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Any comment or question? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. I'll move the secretary of the salary board. And we'll move that down um, like this list is secretary. Okay. Major list, secretary, salary board. I'll second the motion. Any questions or comments or discussion? And I'll in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, who will adjourn that board? Same motion to adjourn the salary board. Second, but all in favor, please indicate this in your eye. Aye. Both same signs. <clears throat> I'll call the assessment board to order and um, at this time entertain a motion for chair. I'll move to go ahead. Um, this, this is your uh, comment. I'll move that this is a picture. Let's appoint as chair. I'll second the motion. Any comment or question? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Both same signs. So moved. And we need a vice chair of the assessment board. I'll make a motion that Mike is vice chair. I'll second the motion. Uh, we need discussion. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, so move. And should we adjourn or agree? Yeah. Dan Seaman Services, so secretary. Dan is the secretary. So you can adjourn that one. Move to adjourn the uh, assessment. <coughs> okay. Motion adjourned. Okay. That's good. Next is the election board. And we'll see a chairman of the election board. I'll move that Commissioner Phillips be appointed as chair of the commissioner of uh, the uh, election board. Moved and seconded that I be uh, chairman of the election board. Any comment or discussion? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. And we'll go to the vice chairman of the election board. Seek a nomination. I'll nominate Mike Coon as uh, vice chairman of the election board. Any second to that. 
second. It's been moved and seconded that we have uh, Commissioner Cohn as uh, Vice Chair of the Election Board. Any comment or question? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, so moved. Motion for Secretary of the Election Board. Second the motion. Any questions or comments? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Proceed, sign, so moved. We need to adjourn the motion to adjourn the election board, please. Second. Okay, we stand adjourned the election board. Next, we will uh, reopen our uh, regular meeting. And we'll start with the treasurer's report. This is new. We have receipts on March the 1st and March the 2nd of $3,291,477.13. Our total cash is $4,495,754.03. We had expenditures of $2,713,303.71. And our undistributed tax claim is $83,641.93. So that leaves us a balance of $1,698,808.25. Our total cash is $1,698,808.25. Second motion. Make a motion to approve the treasurer's report subject to audit. Second that. It's been moved and seconded. Um, subject to audit, I think, is kind of the bad on It's not really being audited. We still get audited. You're, you're accepting our motion, right? Just any comment or question? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 We'll save signs so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Treasurer. Good morning. Can you introduce yourselves and then proceed? Michelle Snavely. And under personnel transactions, resignations, and terminations, Marie Kriebisch, Aging Care Manager, Manager Supervisor One, Area Agency on Aging <coughs> Retirement, effective April 2nd, Lisa Swammer, Administrative Case Manager Two, Area Agency on Aging Resignation, effective March 11th, Eunice Ajike, Fiscal Operations Officer Two, Children and Youth Resignation, effective March 9th, Leslie Boyer, Admin Officer One, Children and Youth Retirement, effective March 5th, Michael Yakum, Casework Supervisor One, Children and Youth Resignation, effective March 4th, Dwayne Grant, Image Clerk, Domestic Relations Resignation, effective February 17th, Timothy Fierro, Lance Corporal at the LCCF, Resignation, effective February 22nd, Last Working Day, February 17th, Ryan Henning, Full-time Correctional Officer at the LCCF, Resignation, effective February 25th, Last Working Day, February 25th, Laura Shirk, full-time correctional officer at the LCCF, resignation effective February 23rd, last working day February 27th. Bradley Collins, full-time correctional officer at the LCCF, resignation effective March 2nd. And Kyle Harkins, full-time deputy sheriff in the sheriff's office, termination effective February 18th. Motion. Motion approved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the uh, transactions. Any questions or comments? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Post safe signs, so moved. Moving on to changes of status, transfers, and promotions. Deborah Smith, transfer from General Clerk C in the Clerk of Courts to Clerk Typist A in the Sheriff's Office. No change in her rate, effective March 7th. Make a motion to approve the change of status for Deborah Smith. Second. Member been, been seconded. Any question or comment? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Under other transactions, the Lebanon County Correctional Facility would like to hire Jessica Lockhart as a full-time correctional officer at the rate of $15.91 per hour, effective <clears throat> March 14th. And the Lebanon County Correctional Facility would like to hire Maria Anofri as a general clerk C at the rate of $752.80 by weekly, effective March 7th. Motion approved to been moved and seconded that we approve those transactions. Any question or comment? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, so moved. 
Moving on to salary board, motion to approve all transactions previously read plus the following. I have to rescind uh, for Bradley Cons and Michael Cons their bonus, uh, sign on bonus payment and the referral payment. Both were to be $1,000 payments and this is due to Bradley Cons' uh, sudden resignation. But I do have Christian Morasco, full-time correctional officer, a one-time 90-day sign on bonus of $1,000 effective March 10th and Samuel Walter as his referral, full-time correctional officer at the Lemon County Correctional Facility, also one-time referral payment at $1,000 effective March 10th. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve those salary board transactions. Any questions? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Their mandate, mandated conference seminars, I have Eric Thaler and Stuart Stilwell from DES would like to attend the PSP tax officer training in Hershey, May 3rd. No registration fee or credits mandated by PSP. Michael Anderson from Domestic Relations would like to attend the 2022 BCSE Spring Directors Meeting in State College April 25th through the 27th, lodging and mileage reimbursement mandated by BCSC. Danielle Gray from MHIDEI would like to attend the policy forum and family engagements in LICC and SJCC in Gettysburg April 1st and 2nd. Mileage meals and tools reimbursement mandated by Oakdale. Audrey, Audrey Fortna from Probation Services would like to attend the 2022 Criminal Justice Advisory Board Conference in State College April 12th and 13th. Lodging meals and parking reimbursement and credits mandated by PCCB. Christopher Fry and Emily Menza from Probation Services would like to attend the 2022 Mid-Atlantic Regional Association for the Treatment of Sexual Abusers Conference in Pocono Manor, May 11th through the 13th, $500 total registration fee, lodging and meals reimbursement, 18 credits mandated by PCCD. And Christopher Fry from Probation Services would like to attend the JNET TAC training in Hershey, May 4th, meals reimbursement, six credits mandated by PCCD. Second. It's moved and seconded that we approve the mandated conference requests. Any questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so ordered. Before you go on, did you mean Michael Snavely or Michelle? Or, uh, it, Michelle, but I didn't hear that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that. Um, under non-mandated conference seminars, Jason Weichel, Gary Verna, Brianna Law Liberty, and Kyle Boyer from DES would like to attend the South Central Task Force Homeland Security Conference in Somerdale, March 23rd and 24th, 16 credits, and it is budgeted. I'll make a motion to approve the South Central Task Force Homeland Security Conference for those uh, mentioned. Second that we moved and seconded that we approve that DES request. <coughs> Questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Post same signs. So and Andrew Prisicki and Jamie George from Planning GIS would like to attend the PA Geo Dev Summit in Harrisburg, March 9th, $50 total registration fee, and it is budgeted. Move to approve that. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve that uh, planning GIS request. Questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Same side. So moved. Michelle Snavely, Leanne Shank, and Stephanie Knoll from Human Resources would like to attend the 2022 Benicon Health Benefits Seminar in Lancaster, March 31st through April 1st, $200 total registration fee, no other reimbursements. I do have a question. Um, why, why does Benacon, if there are carrier charges for that? Mm -hmm. We kind of asked the same question. But yeah, they did just, give us a free ticket. They gave you one free ticket? Yes. Well, I make a motion. It just seems awkward. Yeah, we said no more than about it. Moved and seconded that we approve the human resources request. And uh, any further questions? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Aye.
Tina Litz and Rebecca Davis from LCCF would like to attend the PA County Corrections Association Conference in Pocono Manor April 3rd through the 6th with lodging, mileage, meals, parking, and tools reimbursement. Motion approved. Second. Moved and seconded that we approve the uh, warden's request. Any comment or question? And none all in favor, please do by saying aye. 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 There's a, uh, I'll get you a new chart. So there's a revised chart. Right. Okay, I was wondering which yep. one was right. Yep, there's one off. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll get that for you. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, we had two drownings. We had uh, three falls, um, three smoke inhalation deaths from fire, and uh, one <coughs> sudden unexplained infant death. Uh, we had a total of 19 suicides. The uh, number one cause still remains gunshot wounds. We had uh, 11. We had three overdose deaths from suicide. And we had um, three exfoliations by hanging. And then we had um, two mobile blunt force trauma suicide deaths. I'll explain that. I can't try to finish up here. Um, uh, we had five homicides. Um, two were undetermined. And we still have five uh, pending um, autopsy results. Just a little um, explanation the two mobile board, mobile blunt force trauma deaths were probably two, at least one of the most horrible deaths that I've seen for not only the coroner's office but for the past uh, people who were at the scene who saw the whole incident. It was a um, tractor trailer um, that was going through the intersection, and a gentleman was standing on the corner and jumped underneath the tractor trailer and all the pedestrians standing by in the corner saw the whole thing. And the other one was um, a, a train accident. Um, 
lady on the train tracks in her car and remained on the train tracks and the train train hit her car. Most people passing by, she waved at them as they passed by and no assistance was given. Um, just to, before I turn it over, just to give you, and the commissioners have, have these numbers, and the number of cremations is astronomical from 2019, we had 772 investigations. This past year, we had 908. And that's an increase of last year of 82. The year before, it was an increase of 126. Um, it's just created one amount of unbelievable work for my office staff. Is that because of COVID, the last two um, years? Some of them, but not, but not all. It's just more people are turning to cremations now from, from burials. And, um, I don't think people realize how much work is involved in the investigation of declaring this case to turn over to the funeral homes. We have to pull all the records, uh, medical records, and um, it just has created a lot of work for the office. Um, the good thing is accidental deaths um, from um, overdoses are down, um, suicides are down, so that is that has helped things. Um, any questions before I turn it over to my cohorts? Any, uh, in terms of your relationship with Los, or working in, with the Los Bayos, uh, that seems to be a... Uh, yeah. um, we have a, a new morgue that's being processed at the hospital. That's going to help because the capacity of the morgue right now is, is minimal. And so we have to keep things, we have so many unclaimed bodies. Um, now where people just walk away from their families and we have to take care of the bodies. So we have to, we at least give them a week or two to decide what they want to do. And then the morgue fills up and we get called all the time to get some of these bodies out of the morgue. But we work well with Wellspan. They call us when they, when they need bodies moved. Um, we also, I'd like to, to say, um, with my cohorts here, we work well together and notifying each other of any problems that exist. And I try to notify them of all the cases that we have, so they're up to date with them. Um, Are all of the burial plots that we own used up now? Well, we have, we work with Buse Funeral Home and they have a plot for us that we put them all, we, all the bodies that are unclaimed are cremated. So we place them in one, one burial spot. So the families come and decide they want the body, they work with Buse, and um, so they're easily accessible. So it works out, works out well. Well, that's nice. Do, do we own yeah. the plot or does Boos own the plot? Um, we do. Okay. We do. And but it's not one, it's not one remain per no. plot. No, no, I think no. that's why no. uh, we don't have, we still have some. Right, good yeah. um, I have to commend my office staff um, to try to do their job in my medical practice and do the, um, and do the investigation of the cremation of the working with the funeral homes. Um, and Bob Dowd behind me here is going to be talking a little bit about how we're working with EMA now. Since the first aid and safety patrol went out of the transportation business, we are working with EMA now um, in transporting the bodies down to Lehigh where we do the autopsies and picking the bodies up at the scenes. And um, it's really worked, worked well. It was a good transition. Um, we were hesitant at first of how it was going to work, but it's really worked out well. Um, and uh, when the, my deputies are out at the scene, um, the calls made um, usually before they get there, well, we're going to need transportation. So Bob's men are in the process, and we have our own truck now. If you're driving around the county and see Lebanon County coroner truck, that's, that's our truck. We never had one before. So it's certainly gotten us visibility. Um, can you tell me, is this um, new format of what you file with the state? Have we filed with the state? We always file with the front, um, with the office here for bon for voluntary. I know the state meet what requires right. filing. Too. Yeah. Do you also? I, th I think they did. They, they oh, do you do file that. it with the state? Yeah. So all that's done. So we're up to speed. Okay. Right. Right. One to make sure. Thank you. Um, I'll turn it over to. Dr. Yes. first two-part question. Mm -hmm. uh, the cremations, you said that's mandated. Is that a federal, state, local state, mandate? State, state mandate. Mm -hmm. And then do we know what the cost is to 
investigate all these to actually do the autopsies um, for those who want to be cremated? Well, two separate questions there. Um, autopsies um, are separate. Um, we pay Lehigh um, Valley, we've been working with for probably 25 years. Jamie, do you know the <laughs> cost of uh, the cremations? Uh, $2,500? I don't know. I don't know. Twenty five hundred plus transportation goes down. So you probably look at three thousand dollars for a for a, an autopsy. And um, cremations, we are reimbursed um, for cremations from the funeral homes. And that's part of the funeral home cost. And um, I think it's fifty dollars uh, cremation that we get. The coroner's office gets reimbursement. And then of course we turn that over to Jamie. That's all Jamie. The <laughs> so the coroner's office does produce some revenues. Some. I just would, you know, uh, to echo what you're saying about your staffing and, and, and all the uh, assistant uh, deputy coroners and so on. I mean, that, that's just the volume is so amazing compared to your predecessors or. Yes. Uh, or history, you know, it's yes. just really uh, The coroner's job is not a part-time job. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, well, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I'm the one who gets all those calls. Okay. Well, okay. I was wondering, do you mind rattling off the deputies, who they are, how many there oh. are? Oh, this is going to be a tough one. Um, well, we have Bruce first. We have Bruce Rudy. Um, yeah, thank you. Bruce Rudy, he's from Pomaria. Uh, Doug Leiby. Bruce has been with me the longest, so I'm going to try to go down the longest uh, longevity. Um, Doug, Doug Leiby has been with me the, the next longest. Um, we have. Um, um, Zimmerman. Um, he was a former, well, he is a first aid and safety patrol uh, gentleman. And then his his cohort, um, he worked with first aid and safety. He doesn't do that many cases. Director Dowd, you. Yeah. Vicki Ham, um, she works for the district justice. Um, so all, all of them are part time. I have no full time deputies. So we try to spread the spread the wealth around. Job duties. Do you have the other one? Okay. Is Janet Bradley still? Janet Bradley still works for us part time. And Daniel Bob. And Bob, he's the funeral director for the Kramer Alum. <coughs> Should we get a little, a little something for this? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I think that's it. We're about seven, seven part time deputies. Okay, your cohorts. Oh, oh, you're going to give your. Here. What's uh, for moral support here? Or um, moral support. Good morning once again. Again, my name is Jim Dunmoyer, and I'm with the Levin County Commission on Drug and Alcohol Abuse. Uh, last year, I was here at the same meeting to present the 2020 overdose death uh, numbers. And in 2020, if you recall, we had 39 overdose deaths. I'm here today with Dr. Yoakum to present the numbers. Uh, for 2021, the total overdose deaths were 31, uh, which is a 20.5% decrease from the prior year. Out of the 31 individuals who died of an overdose, uh, gender, 20 males, 11 females. Uh, race was 24 Caucasian, 6, six Hispanic, and one other. Uh, the youngest individual was 23 years of age. The oldest individual was 63 years of age for an average age of 41 years. Can I ask why your number is 31 and the overdose number that was given by the coroner is three? Why the big discrepancy? Uh, it's down three. It's down four. Right. I have a list that Dr. Yoka's office provided me that have a uh, list of 31 individuals that died from an overdose. Uh, I also got this cover letter from Dr. Yoken 
that says overdose deaths drug related is 31. I did not get the chart that you're talking about, yeah. uh, and I don't know what that chart yeah, that's is. That's what going to be. We're going to give you the revised. Which, which three, though, are you referring to? It says here overdose three. That's it. Oh, that's suicide. That's suicide. We're, we're up higher on the chart here. The, the, the suicide, that's the way, that's a matter that they... Up under accidental deaths? Yeah, drug-related accidental deaths. There you go. Uh, so you're using the term drug-related, drug and he, he uses overdose as a different... Okay. I couldn't make it make sense Dr in drug my Drug-related overdoses. Okay. So that's right. So, okay. so we had 31... Uh, out of the 31 people, it's it's really uh, important to note that out of 31, 26 of the overdose deaths involve the use of fentanyl, uh, which is 84% of the people that died in Lebanon County from an overdose involved fentanyl. Uh, the other thing that I broke down for everyone here today, uh, when I was here last year, we used to keep track of the person's address and we used to report that as far as where they died, which wasn't accurate. Uh, so what we did this year was we broke it down where the actual death occurred and the zip code that they occurred. Uh, on the south side of Cumberland Street, there was 12 in the 17042 area code. On the north side of Cumberland Street, 17046, there was six deaths. Uh, in Palmyra, there was five deaths, 17078. In Anvil, there was four, 17003. In Myerstown, there was three, 17067. And in Jonestown, there was one, 17038, for a total of 31 overdose deaths in the county. This information that I provided on the 31 individuals uh, can be found on the Lender County homepage, as well as the LCCDAA's homepage. Uh, we have a information anyone can go on and access the numbers that I spoke about today. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dunmore. Yes sir. There's reports this week that they're finding in the middle school vape units that have been uh fentanyl's been added to it. Do you delineate between the ones where someone might have ingested fentanyl without knowing versus you get that much into the weeds versus those who were taking it knowingly either well knowingly or unknowingly if fentanyl's in our system when a coroner you know investigates that death uh, obviously it does toxicology and the toxicology report would indicate that there was fentanyl involved we can't really determine if the person knew it was or we can't we can't speak to was it intentional or was unintentional we have no idea of knowing that can I make a comment? Um, not only am I the coroner, but I have um, expertise in the drug and addiction field. I have my certification in drug and addiction medicine. I can tell you, speaking to drug addicts every day like I do, the drug addicts pretty well know that almost everything they buy today has fentanyl. They don't, the drug dealers will tell them it has fentanyl, they don't know that. Um, because they put multiple drugs into the concoction that they give out to their clients. But most of the people who use, quote, heroin, pretty well know that fentanyl most likely is in it. Question, do you have a feel, and you stated the fentanyl organization is probably 80% of the drug That's probably in line with state and national numbers. I would, I would guess the thing yes it's the biggest problem. it's across the state it's not just like <coughs> uh, the numbers are similar uh, across the state there, there is one thing if, does anybody else have any questions for me there is one thing that i want to point out to the commissioners and everyone here uh you know there's a reduction of eight folks which is great uh, i always say one's too many uh but i believe uh reduction of eight folks in a year is really good work. I want to let the commissioners and everyone know that some of the reasons behind that, I mean, why did the numbers go down maybe? Uh, I have some thoughts on that. The first thing I would uh, put out there is that we have a strong uh, heroin task force. 
Uh, they're called Stronger Together. They have a website. They also have all this information on their website as well. Uh, they've been more active. Uh, they do a lot of prevention uh, events, activities in the community. Uh, the reason we try to uh, locate the zip codes is so we know where more work needs to be done. So they're in the field, they're in the streets, they're doing things that are you know grassroots type type of things. So I want to commend the uh, Stronger Together Airman Task Force. The other thing, the other point I want to make is uh, Narcan distribution. Uh, in Lebanon County, uh, we distributed over 636 kits in 2021, which is a lot more than we uh, distributed years past. So that's another factor. Uh, another factor that I see is uh, Pennsylvania Counseling uh, Services uh, with funding from our office was able to develop a case management unit where they have seven case managers, they have two uh, certified recovery specialists, and these case managers are able to carry caseloads of people that are in treatment. Uh, not only do they have counselors, but they also have these case managers to help them navigate the uh, treatment and recovery process. Uh, so that's been a big help. Uh, the other thing I have to point out is the warm handoffs to the hospital. Uh, we have a program at the uh, Wellspan Hospital where it's called Warm Handoff. Uh, crisis Intervention meets with overdose survivors and they do an initial assessment of that person. Uh, if that person wants help at that moment, uh, then PCS sends in a case manager that I spoke about earlier and they get that person hopefully from the hospital to treatment. So that's been helping with We've seen in the past where people, when we didn't have a warm handoff, people would go to the hospital, they'd survive an overdose, they'd go home and use again, and some wouldn't make it again. So, so what we're trying to do is those folks that we know are in uh, you know, jeopardy, I guess, uh, they come in for one overdose, we want to address that as soon as possible. Is this what you're doing with some of the um, opioid settlement money? We're, we're doing with uh, federal funds. It, they're called SORS funds. SORS funds uh, that come down from the federal government through the state to our office. Um, and then the other thing I'd like to point out real quick is uh, in Lebanon County, we've expanded services in Lebanon County related to MAT, which is medically assisted treatment, which involves buprenorphine, methadone, or Vivitrol. I just want to point out that we give these numbers to my two cohorts here on a regular basis so they can keep up with where the action is happening so they can so this isn't done just once a year this happens throughout the year and we give them these numbers so they're up to date with what's going on and you can see that the, uh, the way it's distributed there's no, there's no uh, economic status or any it's there's no boundaries right it's, it's east west north south yes uh, so, uh, Pretty much every jurisdiction in London County has experienced. Are they still doing the DARE program? Uh, I don't believe they are. I, I've never done the DARE oh, program. You didn't do that. Uh, I think that was through police. Sheriff. Through yeah. the police department. I know South London Township and my <coughs> township where I reside, they used to do it all the time for the yeah. kids. I don't know if that still exists or not. Okay, I just wondered. There were 14 males and five females. Out of those, there were three veterans. So uh, we uh, do have the uh, DA as part of our suicide prevention task force, and so they ask a lot of questions as far as those individuals. And I know that they are actively trying to assess and assist with individuals with suicidal thoughts and intents as well. That's by far, the, uh, the highest method or means was by individuals. When we look at that, there were um, 18 Caucasian and one Hispanic. We also try to track as far as whether they were known to uh, mental health or drug and alcohol. And so there were actually 12 of those 19 individuals that had a known mental health history. 
four of those individuals were known to our office, MHSPI, and then five had a known substance use history as well. When we look where those completed suicides occurred, um, there were eight in Lebanon, so that's uh, combined between 1742 and 1746. There were four in the Palmyra borough. We had two in Myerstown, one in Grantville, one in Fredericksburg, two in Anvil, and one in Cleona. Where was the last one? Cleona. Cleona, thank you. And then we do look at the numbers per month. By far, there were the most completed suicides during the month of October. So we had five individuals that completed suicide during the month of October. It's hard to say why, but then that was the one. So as stated, uh, there were 19 this year, down by two from last year. But I do want to note that uh, even though the actual completed suicides were down, when we look at those individuals that have suicidal thoughts or intents uh, on a monthly basis or on a daily basis, that those numbers are really quite large. So I'm going to give you some statistics from crisis intervention. Do you have a question? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So overall, there were um, 3,011 individuals that visited crisis uh, during the uh, mid year That's an average of 260 visits per month. Out of those, though, we do look at how many are um, unduplicated individuals. So were there uh, more individuals uh, or less? So there's actually 208 unduplicated individuals. So that means that uh, individuals were visiting more than once to crisis on is that on their own accord, or did somebody bring them in? It's a combination with crisis intervention. Some are walk-ins, some have family members that bring them in. Some are mobile crisis, uh, where we receive a call and someone is in distress and we need to send someone out via mobile to address their circumstances. So it's really a combination of, of um, mobile, a walk-in, On average, there were over 80 of those individuals per month presenting with suicidal thoughts um, and intent. So that's all ages. So I don't have a breakdown as far as whether you know there was a higher number of children and adolescents or a higher number of adults. But that's a pretty large number per month of individuals that are presenting with suicidal thoughts and intent. Um, so they are really trying to address all of that. We're looking at ways that we crisis intervention with staffing and uh, perhaps some additional services that would really enhance uh, what we're doing within crisis intervention. We also have those suicide prevention efforts that are occurring. We have an ongoing media campaign, and that's a partnership with Wellspan Film Haven. Um, we do a combination of funding, and we put that all together for um, social media. We do online newspaper, digital bulletin, and magazine. So we really try to get out there as much as possible and get our messaging out there that there really is hope and help. Um, and you just need to give us a call and we will help you. We also have community training opportunities. And so this is really for the community to learn more about mental health and ways that you can really identify someone who may be struggling and may need assistance within the community. Those trainings include mental health first aid, as well as QPR. QPR stands for question, persuade, refer, suicide prevention training. And then we've added trauma 101. We recognize that so many individuals within our community have experienced some type of major trauma within their lives. And that trauma really drives what we do on a daily basis. And so we need to recognize that trauma plays a large part in how uh, folks are in and then, again, our Suicide Prevention Task Force continues to meet on a monthly basis. Um, we were not as visible during 2021 just because of, of COVID and what was happening, but we're actively planning activities for this year that we can become more visible in the community at events and everything that is happening. We also have uh, May, which is Mental Health Month, so I know that all of that information
election will be coming up very soon referring to many events. Thank you. Any questions for Holly? Yes. <coughs> Not only for Holly, but just to back up to either uh, uh, Dr. Yorkley or Mr. Dunwater. Um, the other five deaths that were overdoses, were those opioid related or caused by other means? The different drugs? Yeah, so you had the 26 that were fentanyl related and, and a total of 31. So what was the other five breakdown of that? Is that the opioids? Well, one of them was amphetamines and methamphetamines. One of them was a mixed drug text, uh, textology, trazodone. I don't know, I'm sorry, that's scratch that. The most of them are com that was our combinations, and we're seeing the amphetamines are huge right now, um, and cocaine. Um, so most of them had the amphetamines and uh, cocaine. <clears throat> four, four actually were cocaine related, and one was actually amphetamine. Methamphetamine. Okay. So those are the two. And the other question is, um, going back to COVID for a second. Um, there were 93 deaths from COVID this past year, and compared to 116, of course, the virus might have been worse then. But do we know how Lebanon compares to other counties of this size? Uh, because we did have this mask up campaign that was run, that ran, and was just curious as to whether that was effective compared to other places where they did have a campaign. Can't tell you. Okay. Yes. No. And that's a tough um, comparison because some of those counties are so, they're maybe larger in geography, so there, there's less. Uh, concentration of folks. And, you know, so there, there's other variables that, that give you the numbers. And that, that, so I don't know the answer, yeah. but I'm just saying. I figured that question, yeah. I had an unknown answer, yeah. but yeah. just yeah. curiosity. Yeah. Well, according to um, the numbers last night, I believe I looked online and uh, the Department of Health, we had 502 deaths from uh, coronavirus in Lebanon County. Now, that's not all in one year. It's over two years, uh, 2021, but it's significant uh, for our population, I believe. Have we finished? Oh, you want to comment on that? No. Oh, no, no. I just wanted to see if Mr. Al would like to say a word on our interactions with for those who don't know, Department of Emergency Services handles the logistics side of the coroner's office, so we do all the transportation uh, from the scene to the morgue, and then when there's an autopsy that needs to be done, we do the transportation from uh, Lebanon up to Lehigh, where those are done, and then we went back. Uh, that partnership started two years ago, uh, and it's evolved quickly, and it's working very well. Uh, you know, it's, it certainly is a whole lot more than was initially, inspect initially expected, but uh, I think it's going to continue to be a good partnership and it's certainly um, yeah. better utilization of capital resources. These numbers will level out some, it's somewhat yeah. low as we go forward. Yeah. Yeah. This, this year, at least if the, if the current rate holds, it, it's going to be less than last year. We bought a truck especially <coughs> for that, if yeah. I recall. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah, the ambulance services, the, they were already taxed. Uh, in reality, they just weren't able to continue doing um, transportation of deceased when we went down the How many miles more. did you put on? Oh, boy. In two years, that truck has been in service. It's probably 20,000 miles on already. I'm taking a guess, but it's good yeah, news. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if there's nothing else, thank you. And I'd like to thank the commission for all their cooperation with the coroner's office. You're welcome. You're
Yeah, this is Ryan's first appearance, I think, at Mr. Meeting. Is that right? Yes. Is that right? Ryan Turner. Turner. Everyone? And Karen. Ryan's owner of department heads, and this is his first appearance. Here's Lemon and High Proud, all right? Sarah. Um, so, we'd just like to introduce yourselves and introduce your position. Thank you. 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 So we're here today to just discuss the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, also known as ERA or ERAP uh, for short. The grant that was started in 2021, uh, passed out to the Department of Human Services, uh, awarded the, the community to get a grant to administer rental assistance and utility assistance. Just have some numbers for you compiled for today of some services, at least our services administered through January of 2022. We've served 610 uh, total households. Rent arrears payments, we've distributed $1,715,875.38. In uh, rental payments made for future rent, we've paid $1,258,059.85. And we've also done, again, utility payments. In arrears, we've paid $679,243.53. And we've paid one utility payment of $175.71 for a future payment. We don't have the exact figure. Era 1, so there's actually now been split into two separate programs. Era 2 and Era 1. Era 1 was a, an initial allotment of just north of $9 million. Um, and there were some broken down into some admin fees. So what we've done to bring us to this point in time, that started again in January of 2021. I believe our first payment went out in April of 2021. And it's a pretty large uh, program that we took on from the very beginning in a very small office. Uh, we've run into some staffing issues and I think just some issues with our technological capacities to be able to administer the program at a, at a quicker rate uh, and even potentially at the, the rate that we had hoped to potentially even spend the money again a little bit quicker just to get it out to uh, the members of our community. So as we you know progressed we had some issues with reporting initially when I took over uh, in September of 2021 they was kind of after us with some errors in our reporting numbers. We just weren't necessarily doing things correctly. So we spent some time, uh, a few months actually, just trying to make sure our numbers were accurate, up to date, current, and just get accurate for the for the reports. We were able to accomplish that, but also in the meantime, we've also again talked with, we reached out to Karen and. We, we were partnered with the Redevelopment Authority last year for the CARES Act, and I you know, had some understanding of that, so we thought maybe we should reach out and see if we couldn't come up with a partnership with the Lebanon County Housing Authority, again, to be able to utilize their services, get potentially better technology, to be able to, again, update. We still are kind of doing everything on paper. Uh, we now have a room full of boxes filled with applications so we're still mainly reporting numbers by hand we're just looking at avenues that we may be able to again just streamline the program a bit and also keep it within our community you know we didn't want to get to that point where that we screwed it up too bad but also you know again got to the point where again it didn't just be pulled from the community so we again like I said reached out to the housing authority they've been working on uh, touching some numbers and we were able to come up with the current contract that we're hoping to again be able to move forward like I said keep era one and era two within the county uh, era one will end in 2022 uh, September and era two is currently uh, to run through 2025 you're stuck here with Karen did you have are you, you going to go over the fine points of this or was Karen uh, if you want them, Karen, I think Karen could. I mean, the numbers are all there in the contract, but um, if you'd like to do that. Unless you have something like that. 
I don't. Just that we're very excited, actually, to be partnering with Ryan, and I think that um, you know we're happy that we were able and asked by Ryan and um, the CAP agency to step in, and we feel that we our software is going to be able to help run this a little bit smoother, um, and our um, staff that we also are hiring a few more people, and um, we'll also offer to um, interview anyone who might be interested in coming aboard also from the agency. Um, and I, we're excited to take this on. Are you offering bilingual services? We do. We have uh, staff that speak bilingual on staff already, yes. If I could just add a little sum up, I guess. Uh, it, it, it seems, and I think everyone here concludes that that um, after you know over a year of doing this, uh, kind of you know it's been it's been assigned to CAP to do just like CARES was assigned, just as ARPA was assigned. These are these were very quickly evolving programs, and CAP did what they have, what they could, and and the reporting is accurate now. As you hear that the numbers, the, some of the money has been doled out, but uh, Karen's agency is a much better tool for this. They do this all the time. Um, you know, it's not our sort of our bailiwick to, to do this rent assistance. We do other programs uh, well, but this one is just, you know, we've done what we can. It just makes more sense. Um, one thing I want to mention, and mainly why I wanted to chime in, one thing I wanted to mention here is that uh, there are administration costs, and that's basically what's outlined in here is, is the administration allowance through ERAP that will compensate uh, Karen's agency for doing this, but um, we spoke the other day, and I wanted to be careful that if there are any, if there would be any overages, I don't want there to be any overages at the end where the program closes up, Karen comes and says, hey, the admin was a little higher, you know, and then, and then the county is looking to uh, supplement uh, an already, you know, a, a grant program with general right. funds. I don't want to be caught like that. Sure. So basically, uh, there was some language inserted in here that the administration the administration allowance won't exceed the available amount in the grant, and they've agreed to that, and I think that'll be fine. Yeah, so. yeah I wasn't sure if that's <coughs> really the, uh, the administrative costs only follow the distribution of the grants. So I also wouldn't rule out the, the idea that there may be, it may be extended, it may be supplemented, I, I really don't know. Sure, anyone knows. We've been surprised many times over the last two years with these funds coming from Washington. To, not to, um, but you know, the work that CAP did to try to get the word out on this was, you know, really uh, exceptional. I mean, they they worked with all the landlords and all the uh, local uh, anyone that had a tenant. Uh, you know, so there was so much effort put into it. So I don't want to discount the fact that. There was a strong effort put forth, and um, you know, if we can do get the logistics and the, the technology upgrade, that that'll maybe be a good marriage. For so this would yeah. be an April one yeah. <coughs> transition to attend, which which times perfectly with the quarter yeah. and the reporting of the end of the quarter. We were shooting for March one initially, but it made more sense to not do it mid quarter, or you know, two months into it, three months quarter. So, mm -hmm. okay. so um, I guess go ahead. And I did have one other question. Sure. I, mean, um, I, I was trying to do the math in my head here. It looks like the cost to administer the program is about 140000 a year. Does that sound about right? I didn't see a total. That's why I was just trying to add up. It's up to two. It's about, if I remember correctly, and <coughs> I'm sorry, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I think it was about twenty-five dollars or $26,000 a month. Um, so. Yeah, that's with the technology and with the with the, uh, yes. the manpower. Um, if you want to, I mean, the overall <coughs> amount of maximum administration that could be derived from this program, which is what CAC really wanted to put on, it is about 1.18 million over the life of this. This is so that's a lot of money yes. uh, to administer. So the and that that's by percentage allowance. Correct. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking at page three, which outlines some of those costs. Yeah. yeah, I was seeing the individual costs, but I couldn't find the total, and that's why I was looking for that. Thank you. 
So those are those are the big benefits. Right now, all that data is very compartmentalized, and there, there's no easy way for it to, to get pre municipal boundaries. Uh, and this solves a lot of those problems. And they're, this type of software is really expensive. It's expensive to maintain, and it's expensive uh, to the capital cost is this big as well. Uh, the grant we're asking permission to apply for is $250,000. And with that, we would like to uh, cover the capital costs of the software purchase as well as the first two years of maintenance on top of that. After that two years, we have several options on how that maintenance can be covered. Um, option one is the county uh, decides it's beneficial to the, to the entire county and then it's over to the county budget. Option two is we defer that cost to municipal police departments based on the user model. So municipalities are helping to pay? That'd be option two, but I'd rather have yeah. the option one, but go ahead. In, in two <laughs> years, we will have to make that decision how we want to. The grant would cover <clears throat> everything two years going. Else? Sure. I have a couple of questions. This is all new to me, so bear with me, please, so I can understand completely. Um, first of all, we normally get a completed application to peruse and approve, and I don't see that. Will we be getting that? We haven't done an application yet. There's a there's kind of a short timeline on this grant. It's in to, March. Uh, yeah, the middle of March, I believe, is when we have to have the application in. So right now, it will, we're asking permission to apply, uh, and then we will complete the application and send a copy of it to you. You will send a copy of it? Okay, that helps. will help answer a lot of questions, I'm sure. But I don't understand, because I thought all crimes got reported to a state database, and so we're going to do a county one. So what is the difference between the state and county database? I mean, I'm hearing you say some things, but don't they provide the same kind of information? I, I think you're referencing the UCR reports that okay. are reported to the FBI. Um, this would be timely, so everybody would be able to, to be able to, to share the information. Like I said, currently coming, the chief and I coming from the city police, we had one system. Uh, South Lebanon, North North Lebanon used the same system as the North city. Lebanon still used um, however, we didn't we weren't able to share information timely. But all that and data so, doesn't go to the state where you can no, access it? No, not until the end of the, no. Not no. timely. If, if this is, like, you know, again, it, it, the key word is timely. Okay. Um, I know the difference here real quick. I think a fundamental difference, though, to your question is that, that crimes are reported to a database. This is activity. Right. This is right. not just this crime. Is this current, is, as Chief has described, report. you might have a real time versus crime. Right. Okay. Yeah, you might have, you know, somebody who in one jurisdiction maybe just, you know, uh, Maybe there was a domestic, and it was dealt with, no crime committed, everybody moved on, so to speak. And now, in another jurisdiction, something flared up an hour later, you'd have the ability to, to see that, that another jurisdiction just dealt with that. But otherwise, you might not, unless it was overheard over the radio or something like that. Is that a fair? Yeah, the, the workflow changes entirely. Instead of having to go back and look through state and federal systems from an individual to see if there was a contact, and then reaching out to that police department to find out what was now an officer from the car the second they pull over a vehicle put the license plate in we'll know that they got pulled over a mile down the street we'll know what happened in that um, and all that information will be readily available thank you for that clarification jamie that simple definition certainly helped me to get my head around what you were asking for so then the next question would be um How, how do we control access? I mean, will you have the same approval kind of thing that, in other words, when you go to a state database, you have to have a certain level of approval or access. credentials? I mean, it's controlled by the police departments, so I think it would be there. Is it in the cars, or where, where is this thing housed? I, uh, it's, it's, it's housed on our, I mean, it's literally located on our servers. In, it's just for like EMA. our CAD system. Yeah. Okay. Just like our CAD system. Law enforcement has the equipment to access those servers. Okay. We already own a lot of that equipment already, just through the nature of what we do with mobile data terminals and our basic technology with public safety. It's not on a public domain. No. It's, not, it's not something you can access from the internet. All right. From so it's secured and nobody can hack into it, and you guys have just your officers going into it? Yeah. There's not a public terminal anywhere. 
Okay, I just wanted to make sure I understood. Thank you. Now, it doesn't mean a police department can't log in and provide a police report as I'm doing right now. It just changes what software they're using. But for instance, this would not be accessible to the media. Correct. Just a comment, and listening to what you're saying, uh, uh, to me it seems like almost a no-brainer. It's a significant investment, but if I look at listening to you, the return is improving the safety of our responders uh, and getting that immediate real-time information, uh, improving the safety of any perpetrator and the, the, the community in general. Great concept. Thank you. It also allows us to onboard some departments that don't currently use the reporting system. So not every police department has their own system. There are standalones, but not everybody has one. Well, there are law enforcement bodies that don't have a great, uh, the sheriff's office is a good example that doesn't have a great software solution for this and they would be able to come on board and improve their workflow as well. Yes, Jamie. Uh, do you have any sense of the there's seven million dollars available? You're asking for two fifty. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sense of the competitiveness of this? I mean, is this something? I know it's a it's a burn. It's a jag grant. They've been around for a long time. This is. I mean, this grant is a. It's going to um, provide benefit countywide. And yeah, well, and, that, and that's in your favor. Yeah, I imagine that will get us higher up on the list. But as far as like most of the grant experience that I've dealt with, you know, a regional solution kind of puts us to the front of the line, you know, as opposed to my department or sheriff's department asking for a specific thing. I, I don't really have any grasp of how competitive it yeah, is. Yeah, you, you don't know if historically there's, you know, three times as many requests as there is many. Like that, so. okay. And if the grant comes back and we're awarded a different amount, we'll award less than that we'll before accepting, we'll have that discussion. If you aren't already, you might get some letters of support but that may be something, you know, from the jurisdictions that would demonstrate the regional. Maybe you're already on that. Can I ask a couple questions? Sure. <clears throat> so, countywide, I get that, but if a neighboring county has similar systems or has this exact software, mm -hmm. can they tap into it and get reports, especially in light of, as you said, actors? don't know boundaries, if they're acting bad in, you know, Berk, somewhere here in Eastern Lebanon that could spill into Berks, is, is there a shareability with other counties? The shareability counties? certainly exists, but that goes through the DA's office at the county level. Um, I know Berks and Lehigh counties are working on a similar type of reciprocity. Okay. And then, if this is accepted by the commissioners uh, to release the funding, when if you said this, I apologize. When would it be up and running? Like, when would you like to have it? The the grant won't be awarded until September, I believe, mm -hmm. which puts us into the 2023 time frame for actual implementation. Okay, so somewhere in 2023. And yeah, just for clarification, it's, this is not at this point county kind of running. This is not county kind of And then, if some of our smaller municipalities inside of Lebanon County, did they have to spend the money as well? Will they get this information automatically through uh, existing? being tied into the county, or do they have to make a purchase as well to access this information? Are you, so if you're talking specifically about the law enforcement entities... Yeah, like a small municipality. The intent with this is to offer that out to all of them. Oh, so they would have access to the same... Yeah, uh, this in, would replace yeah. their existing reporting system. Yeah, okay. If you said that, I apologize. That's right. Yeah, you, you were outreaching. Yeah. I'm sorry. For instance, West Lebanon, though, if, if they don't have... They hire North Lebanon, West Lebanon wouldn't have access, it would be through North Lebanon, right? The law enforcement entity with jurisdiction okay. has access to it. I want to make sure I understood that. Thank you, I'm sorry. Okay, good, that's all right. Anything else before we ask for a motion? Let's move it. I'll make a motion to approve the um, $250,000 grant application subject to getting a copy when it's complete. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have one more grant? If you guys are welcome, say it. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, second grant, uh, asking permission, or asking the commissioners to execute the necessary documents to move forward with the annual, sorry, every five years, uh, hazard mitigation grant. Uh, our plan expires at the end of 2023. Uh, and this is the grant that we get to uh, fund the update of that plan. It's a $100,000 grant. Normally, the county is responsible for a 25% cost share. However, for this particular grant cycle, FEMA has indicated that they're using uh, ARPA money and CARES money to cover the county's uh, portions. So, it will be, this will be a 100% cover. Um, there, are, there are two forms that I need to get into the federal system before I can even dump out the entire application. Um, and those two forms are designation of an agent. And then the commitment letter. The commitment letter is stating that we understand that we're responsible for that 25%. Um, and that's because this is a federal grant, so you know, we'll come back around on the other side. Any questions? Just could you just briefly describe what hazard mitigation is? Yes. What the plan accomplishes uh, by having it? Hazard updated? mitigation is a very big plan that identifies risks, um, hazards, vulnerabilities um, that countywide that could impact us and identifies potential mitigation measures and projects that could be funded to help reduce the impact on us. Um, it's, it's necessary for any type of federal hazard mitigation funding to do things like uh, repair dams or um, install um, water retention. Uh, I think the hazard for the hazard bike was a hazard mitigation project. So the plan is a required plan to allow us to have access to funding for those types of projects. One big uh, project that's not only here, but uh, other counties has been taken is, is relocation of frequently flooded structures. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, there were properties along the Swati, or there used to be properties along the Swati that would just flood even before flood stage. And, and some of those have been funded to be relocated and, and that therefore don't have the issue every single time there's a high water event. And that all of that is then addressed and taken care of through federal funds, but without a plan, you right, can't do it. And this is, it's required all the way down to the municipal level. And what happens in the process is we meet all the municipalities, we take their input, put it into the plan, and then they adopt our plan as theirs when the time comes. Imagine the pandemics are going to be higher up. I'll second the motion. Thanks, we move and seconded that we approve this uh, application for the hazard mitigation plan. Any uh, comments required? Nothing. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so ordered. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right, keep up the good work. Thank you. Proclamation uh, recognizing the passing of Richard A. Blystein. Um, Mr. Blystein was a, um, passed away uh, recently and was uh, born June 14, 1933, graduated from London High, served four years uh, in the Navy as a gunner's mate, uh, was a lifelong member of many veterans' organizations. The one thing that is uh, just incredible to me is an astounding 12,000 military funeral honors that he participated in it as part of the military force honor guard. Um, and if you do the math on that, that's an incredible, incredible time commitment over many, many years. Uh, I know he did several a day sometimes. Or just, <coughs> so um, he was also a volunteer firefighter with, uh, with some of the companies in Lebanon, 45 years on the active fire line. And um, this is to express appreciation for his devotion to the dedication of the plan. You have a second motion? Make a motion to approve um, the proclamation for Richard Leistein in honor of his service to our country and beyond. Second that. It's approved and second it. I would just like to comment that uh, he was like a, a triple threat. Uh, he was uh, on the city level, he was a city councilman also. and active uh, in that area, but at the county level and that as a country with serving our, our nation. 
Um, he also used to portray uh, Uncle Sam at events. I mean, he, he, was, he was very uh, learned in, in uh, I'm sorry. Patriotic? Yeah, but learned in, in uh, history. So he could express those things at different meetings. And it, he was very uh, um, just well known throughout the county at, you know, as a very patriotic individual. And so I think this is a fitting um, proclamation to recognize all his work. Um, so any other comments? Not all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 For the same sign, so moved. Okay. Next item I have is, is a letter um, from the board to the uh, acting deputy assistant secretary of the Army uh, at the Pentagon in D.C. And this is a letter in opposition to the proposed wind turbine project on the Anthracite Ridge near Fort Indian Town Gap. Uh, you might recall back, I think, at the end of December, uh, retiring Fort Indian Town that Gap commander and, um, and Colonel Weisnick were here and spoke at length about this project and, and the threat that it, that it uh, presents to potential helicopter training and other air traffic out there, among other things, including uh, the environment, wildlife, etc. Um, this is a huge project that's been proposed. It is in Schuylkill County, I think, and uh, Hagen's Township has been dealing with it uh, from a zoning perspective. But ultimately, there is a decision to be made by the, by the uh, uh, Department of Defense on this. And so this letter outlines all of the reasons why here in Lebanon County we would be concerned about this project and, and its threat to the gap and uh, either the existence of the gap or the size of, of, or the level of service the gap provides now versus uh, you know, what could be if, if this affects its ability to train. So, Fort Indian Town Gap is a huge economic engine here in Lebanon County, and it's important that we support our military. Um, they've been around since the World Wars, and um, in addition to the, uh, the the money that they bring into the community, they provide jobs, and uh, they're good-paying jobs, and they they take care of us. They are our defense, and with everything going on in the world, it would be a sin and a shame not to extend this um, letter of support to our military. So I'll make a motion to approve um, this letter and submit it to the Department of Defense. I'll second that. Okay. It's moved and seconded. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 No same sign. So I would have liked if it could have been a more concise, but I, I mean, there's a lot. We, there's a lot to deal with there. I understand that, but sometimes you know, going over one page is. Uh, oh, it's, it's just it's a very meaty letter. It's there's a lot of good stuff. There. All right, uh, I've got then uh, three other items. I have two hotel tax grant fund uh, tourism grant applications. One is for the Sitar said Swatara Watershed. I'm trying to speak to here. Watershed Association. Uh, submitted by the President Bethany Connor, Canner, sorry, um, and this project is for Bordner Cabin Flood Restoration. It's a $53,000 total project cost, and uh, attached to it is the estimates on the type of work um, and uh, some information about the Bordner Cabin being a destination fighting for hikers, bikers, and horseback riders. In 2018, there was a 500-year flood that, uh, where boulders had been dislodged, stream was destroyed, masonry from the foundation of the cabin was left unsupported. So um, this application is before you. The one thing I will point out to you, as I do any time this exists, is that, that your, uh, your policy on these grants or your guidelines on the grant is a, a maximum $10,000. This one is requesting $39,750. You have waived those before. Uh, they're, your, they're your guidelines. Um, but uh, in, in that, if that's the case, I'm just pointing that out because it still meets the 25% match uh, to that amount and so on. So uh, you have a chance to go over that. So. Okay, seek a motion. Motion to approve. No second, I guess we can't do it. Just 
just kidding. I'll second the motion. Uh, any discussion? Joan, do you want to explain why you came I'll just be abstaining because um, I'm no longer president nor on the board, but the project originated when I was president uh, due to the flood of 2018, and therefore um, there is the appearance of a conflict of interest. So I think that I should abstain to make sure I'm adhering with the law. So you don't have any pecuniary interest, though, in this? Correct. That's that the is, law. That's, okay. Well, the law is more extensive than that, but um, <coughs> I, think, I think the application can stand on its merits. All right. Anything else? All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And I abstain, please. And one abstention. The uh, uh, award will be granted to the one. All right, then the next one we have is for Gretna Theater. Um, they are requesting funding for their mar marketing strategic plan uh, for the Mount Gretna Playhouse season coming up. And they have a total cost of this project of $25,000. They're requesting $10,000 toward that. Uh, they outline that as $5,000 in dig digital display ads, $2,500 to purchase billboards, $1,000 for digital platform ads within a 50 mile radius of Gretna through Google, Facebook, and MailChimp, and $1,500 for printed material. So they have received this type of grant before. Uh, I'll just note that they do a very nice job administering it and following up and putting it to use, and I probably don't have to speak to the, uh, the reach of Gretna Theater in terms of going tourists. Second the motion for the Retina Theater grant. Okay, yeah. motion to second to approve this $10,000 grant. Any discussion? I just would like to note, I, I hadn't noticed this before, with them, that uh, Pat Castagna is the uh, uh, president of their board of directors. And uh, one of the son in laws of uh, Carlos Arlefler. So they don't live in Lancaster, but he's still very active in the county, which is, is nice to see. Um, if there's nothing else, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 same sign, salute. Okay. And uh, lastly, I have an uh, uh, exemption from real estate requests of disabled veterans who will all three here meet the criteria for the program, uh, an exemption. Uh, they are uh, Constance Shea of Spring Hill Lane, Lebanon, Brenda Hartman of Jonestown Road, Lebanon, I'm sorry, Jonestown Road, Jonestown, and James Carpenter of Monroe Valley Drive. I'll make a motion to approve the veterans, 100% uh, disabled veterans, real estate tax exemptions as presented. Second that motion. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, so moved. Very good there, Dean. All right. Anything else from the floor? Just a quick fun question. Uh, fun question? Yeah, we'll take for it. Commissioner Kuhn, uh, how did your first meeting go? <laughs> well, we got through the first meeting, and then uh, I didn't have to vote to raise taxes, so I think that's uh, a good thing. All got to go from here. Yeah, take the fifth. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just honored to be here and, and, and be a part of this. I'm born and raised here, and given so many blessings and opportunities as a kid growing up and now as a parent raising my family, I just look at this as an opportunity to serve and give back. Right. Okay. Any other fun questions or other questions? <laughs> if not, I'll seek a motion to adjourn. So, okay. Thank you all. <clears throat> Chairman, welcome.